grow up, that God has a plan for the whole world, a great and glorious plan to redeem all of creation. And in the meantime, until we see that telos, that point where it all comes together, in the meantime, if we love one another, if we trust in God, then in our lives every day, we will have the bread of life. We will have the bread of life and we will never be hungry. That's what Jesus is telling us today. We will have the living water of Christ and we will never thirst. Love one another, trust in God, and we will have the bread of God that comes down from heaven and gives life to the whole world. God comes to us in the person of Jesus to speak the truth in love. Our gospel lesson picks up this morning after the feeding of the 5,000 that we heard from John's gospel last week. A miracle, a giant, big, beautiful miracle, which is mentioned in all four of our gospel accounts, which makes it very, very important. The feeding of the 5,000, this miracle, has a huge impact on the crowds of poor people who have also seen Jesus heal the sick. That's primarily why they are flocking to him. He heals them. He lays his hands on people and heals them. Jesus is a miracle man, and they want more. So what do they do? They follow him. They get in boats. They cross the sea. They get in boats. They cross the sea again. They follow him wherever he goes. In our pa passage for today, Jesus is primarily interested in moving the people's experience of him from the temporal to the transcendent. We see Jesus make this turn. He's laid his hands on them and healed them. He's fed 5,000 people with 12 baskets left over, this abundance of leftovers. But now he wants their understanding of the miracles to mature. He wants them to grow up from simply believing that Jesus is a miracle man who can heal them and feed them. Jesus now is starting to move them, coax them to understand that he is the son of God. And he is here to tell them that the life of the world is great and beautiful. And it can be even now if we use our gifts to love each other and we use our resources to feed each other. One scholar, Raymond Brown, puts it this way. The crowd's aspirations are on the material level. They see the miraculous element of the sign, but not its meaning. Jesus tries to raise them above their materialistic outlook, but is met with a persistent inability on the part of the crowds to understand. We just don't get it, because we're not quite mature enough to get it. These Galileans, Raymond Brown goes on, these Galileans do not recognize that the messianic manna is the word of God, divine teaching and wisdom. It is not the bread of the desert given by Moses, that manna, but Jesus, the bread given now by the Father. In our passage from the gospel today, we start in chapter 6 of John, the discourse on the bread of life. Believe me, it gets way more complicated in the next few weeks. You gotta come. I'm the preacher next week. We're starting this little sermon series. I'm the preacher next week, and then Rich preaches on, uh, our deacon preaches on um, the 8th, the, no, the 15th, and then Dale wraps it up on the 23rd. So uh, stay tuned, because as Dale said last week, we will be in chapter six of, six of John's Gospel for the next four weeks. The bread of life, life discord, I, discourse, I am the bread of life that comes down from heaven and you will never be hungry. Don't you want to know more about that? Jesus does not give up, give up on the crowds, believe me. In the next few weeks, you're going to see how persistent Jesus will be. He continues to coax them into a transcendent understanding of the healing and the feeding that he brings. Jesus will persist, grow to maturity. He begs the crowds, see that if you believe that God wants abundance for all people, both temporal abundance, material abundance, because Jesus does want us to have our daily bread, and spiritual abundance, then we'll share with each other, we'll love each other, and we will defend the rights of the poor and the destitute to the authorities. 
we will speak the truth in love to each other and to power, and we can change things for the least of these especially. With an abiding faith in the radical love of God for the whole world and every person in it, you can move mountains. So let's grow up. Let's grow up together. Let's grow to a more mature faith in Jesus Christ, because that is where we will continue to experience the joy of his saving help. Amen. Now let's stand together. In the words of the Nicene Creed, remember we're using the expansive language version of the Eucharistic prayer, which includes or the uh, Eucharistic of the Eucharist service, which includes the Nicene Creed. It changes slightly um, in small ways uh, during the course, so you're, it's not you. It's it's the new version that we are um, using today. Page nine of your service bulletin. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We continue with the prayers of the people on page 10. Please stand or kneel as you wish. For all people in their daily life and work, for our families and neighbors, and for those who are alone, for our president and governor, this community, the nation, and the world, for all who are justice, freedom, and peace, for the just and proper use of your creation, For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who are sick, friends, and needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who are in the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Allison, Bob, Tom, Dale, and Harry, and Rich, our clergy, and for all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, Terry, Kay and Alex B, John, Pat, Bob C, Mary, Rudy and the Cooper family, Maria, Larry, Val, Meredith, Hazel, Stan and Jenny. And for family and friends, Gavin, Tony, Jim and family, Bob H, Todd, Will, Lori and Bill, Carol, Jason, Angel, Drew, Morgan, Sandy, Sarah, Rachel and Emma, Will and Jess and Janice. And we pray especially for Jim, our aspirant to the priesthood, Cheryl, our aspirant to the diaconate, teachers, responders, our our military personnel, healthcare workers, and others that we name.
Lord, hear us. For your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. Who put their trust in you. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy on us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone, and so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. COVID peace. God's peace. Your wife left. Okay. I just... I, I don't want to not notice. <laughs> Please be seated and I'll tell you a little bit about what's going on at St. Richard's Church besides the fact that we are all got our masks on again. We are a church on a mission. We are here to discover God's grace, change our lives, and change the whole world. And we're so glad that you're with us this morning and I'll greet you at the door. Because, you know, we're trying to limit, now we limit, and I don't want to get in, uh, too near unvaccinated people. So this is your designated area. Uh, for uh, children who are not yet eligible to be vaccinated, which is what Hazel is, right? Yeah, she's not vaccinated, I right. Don't get near these people, okay? <laughs> uh, we, we really, uh, really want to be as cautious as possible with our, um, our youngest folks. And, uh, you know, I know, I, we could say this for another year and a half. Please tell me we're not going to say this for another year and a half. And he's going to be mad at me because I'm supposed to be using this mic because we're down a mic, and when uh, the other clergy are here, I have to use this mic for announcements. Okay, here we go. We are on a mission, though. We are here to discover God's grace, change our lives, and change the whole world, and we are going to cautiously move through um, into fellowship activities as uh, we're going along. So, the one thing that I know we are doing on August 13th is feeding the homeless people at the Coalition for the Homeless. St. Richard's uh, partners with Winter Park Pres Presbyterian Church, and we flip and flop. This, this month we are making the hamburger macaroni casserole, uh, which is just so much fun, and uh, you're, you, you're gonna love it to uh, feed it to your family too. Uh, so make a double batch. But anyway, uh, the, the uh, Maddie and Bella will be here next week to pass out pans and recipes so that you can cook um, that and bring it back to the church on Friday uh, before 4 o'clock on August 13th. And Heather Kirby wants to make sure we support the coalition as much as possible. We have hats that say St. Richard's. We have aprons that say St. Richard's. And Heather wants you to have a shirt that says coalition. Look at it. It's beautiful. So next week, you can put your order in for your very own coalition um, t-shirt, which uh, part of your, the proceeds that you, will go directly to the coalition. It's not just for the cost of the shirt. It's going to go to support the coalition, which is what they have the shirts for. So Heather Kirby wants to make those available for you. So we'll take orders next week. So we're going to, again, go, go, we're going to go slow with, I'm not going to make announcements about all the fellowship stuff that's in here because we're just not sure what we're doing. But I will uh, make an announcement about Weaving Memories, a healing craft for mourners. Julie Dunsworth is going to have an information session about this one day or uh, one shot workshop. It's a, it's a one time 
workshop. She's going to, it's an information session next week, August 8th, um, between the services at 9.30, as you see on page, on the second page of the announcements. Uh, she's going to tell you th about this wonderful um, workshop that she, that she, um, sorry, that she uh, facilitates to help you deal with the grief of a pet or of a loved one, but it, it, you've done it for your pet, right? Yes. So it's, it's a really wonderful sounding workshop, and I, um, I, if you are interested in that at all, 9.30 next week uh, we'll meet in, or 9.15 next week, we'll, no, 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 yes, 9.15 next week, next Sunday, between the services, Julie will be in the parish hall. We'll set you up in there. And if you know Hazel Will, Hazel and Hank Will were um, founding members of St. Richard's Church. Hazel turns 90 on August 11th, and her family is having an open house so that you can stop by and say happy birthday to Hazel. Please wear a mask at her home. Uh, the address is in the bulletin. It's right down the street from St. Richard's, so that's August 7th. Um, Please, if you know Hazel, stop by, and you can wave at her from outside even if you um, want to, just so she uh, feels the love of her St. Richard's uh, Episcopal Church community. All right, who's having a birthday? We did have um, Nancy Richter, who the flowers are dedicated, who donated the cost of the flowers this week. Oh, she's having a birthday. She um, she turned 85 this week. Are you having a big birthday? Lindsay? Okay. We like to know if you're having a zero or a five birthday at St. Richard's so we can celebrate with you. I'll stay uh, this far away from you. What day is your birthday? Next Monday. On page 830 of your prayer books, what prayer would you like? Oh God, our times are in your hands or watch over your child. Oh God, our times are in your hands. Appropriate. Page 830, prayer number 5050. Let us pray for Lindsay's birthday. Oh God, our times are in your hands. Look with favor, we pray, on this your servant as she begins another year. And strengthen her trust in your goodness all the days of her life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Happy birthday! Happy birthday! <laughs> Happy birthday. Uh, and Jane and John Blackford celebrate their anniversary this week. Happy anniversary, Jane and John Blackford, if you are watching us. And now, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
again, our expanded language Eucharist, so a few words um, in Eucharistic prayer B may sound a little different to you. Page 12. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, for you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation and the calling of Israel to be your people in your words spoken through the prophets and above all in Jesus Christ, the word made flesh. For in these last days you sent Jesus to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In Christ you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In Christ you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, God, he broke it and he gave it to his disciples and he said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and he said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember Christ's death, we proclaim Christ's resurrection, we await Christ's coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Savior of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us in the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, through whom we are acceptable to you, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with Richard and all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your children. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia.
people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. Feed on him in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving.
post-communion prayer is on page 17 of your service bulletin. Standing or kneeling as you wish, let us pray and give thanks together. Eternal God, you have graciously accepted us as living members of our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you now and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Our closing hymn is Guide Me, O Thou Great Jehovah, found on page 18 of your service bulletin. Please.